but we're still okay with the limited Java memory mm -hmm. API bits that were talked about in the yeah. face to face. That's still okay. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, okay. Um, <coughs> So now, um, look at the agenda. Uh, we think we will skip the yeah, the CPU device class discussion. Uh, maybe we can talk about that briefly in the afternoon. Um, but for now, let's uh, talk about the various uh, specs and their status. Let me just present. present. Okay. Um, so, um, we have HR time which is, yeah, as uh, we talked to Philippe earlier, is all, all set other than um, an administrative discussion related to objections from the ping. So there's not much to talk about there. Um, if we... Um, yeah, I didn't see that. So I'll present for Performance timeline. Um, in terms of spec issues, we are at uh, zero. If we look at L2 issues, we have zero open issues. In terms of uh, web platform tests, uh, we have a bunch of tests that are failing, but I believe those are L3 tests. Um, so, Buffer is buffered L3. flag is L3. Um, and then we have a very, like the ideal harness ones uh, the and case, the supported case entry. Case sensitivity ones? Hmm? Case sensitivity yeah. Oh. yeah, it looks like there were three. What, oh, case sensitivity. Yeah. Um, that is. Not three, so yeah, but we have two passing implementations on that, I guess. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, <laughs> that was the bane of my existence right now. Okay, I that I, it's had need info on me for like six months, and every night I get a message, it's like, What are you gonna do about this? <laughs> You intermittent failure taunting me. Um, so I don't know. Okay, uh, don't know in terms of. Um, is it a problem with the Um. Yeah, you just haven't had time to. Go I haven't had, even had time okay. to look at it. Yeah. Okay, so sometimes Firefox is completely green, and sometimes it has a red. Exactly. Yeah. And the fact that Safari has. Do you agree with that? Oh, I don't know. I'm not seeing the data. Okay, that's. I'm asking. Yeah. So let me let me just to make sure <coughs> that I'm looking at the right ones here. But. And and the um, fact that that Safari has a red on something that seems fairly specific hints to me that maybe there's a test failure test issue. I have no. I, I can't imagine a flaky test for case sensitivity. Yeah, that's I can't see that. Yeah. <laughs> you see I also cannot imagine that. <laughs> so I have this 20 hours ago intermittent. Performance timeline. Yep. Case sensitivity. Any HTML. 
Get entries by name. Values are case sensitive. That's super weird. The cert equals resource entry exists. Expected one. Oh, to. it's probably yeah. It's probably about um, the test itself is not written to ensure that the resources have all been downloaded, oh. and therefore the check for that's my guy. I just make it okay, up. Okay, well, we're going to talk about this later because yeah. if you can help me solve this bad boy, uh, I would make, I would make it. Obviously, we shouldn't be using resource <laughs> timing for this test. Yeah, right? we should be oh. using user time. And I don't know why it's using resource time. Should be using performance to find. Yeah. Because I, yeah. I have investigated this and have seen no reason why it should fail. Okay. I, I'm not I have literally, I, I know that. I don't remember. So what I my problem it? right now is to find the actual test on GitHub. That's the, <laughs> it's a 404. And, uh, sorry, we're, we're now down in the weeds. It looks to me like this is all the failures are things that could be quickly investigated and handled and drilled out. Is that? It, I think that's the level of what we're yeah, trying to get okay. to. Sorry. After lunch. <laughs> yeah. 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 This looks fun, but not hard. <laughs> <of what's laughs> sure. Uh, so sorry for running another round. No worries. So yeah, basically, I think that other than that, um, maybe supported entry types as well. Looks like that. Is that supported in Firefox? Like, did you add support for that? I thought we did. Oh, that's that's. Oh, the, that's the, oh, we did not. I know we did not. Well, I don't know for sure. That's for Firefox. Uh, Feedback. Yeah. <laughs> You're <failing your> test. <clears throat> it, yeah, the passing exists in return entries. Right. So, so it, it should it should that test is checking that supported entry types equals equals. Right. Yeah, is this the frozen entry, entry thing? Yeah. yeah. yeah we talked array. about frozen array. Yeah, yeah, we never got to the bottom of that. Right. So but just ensuring it's reusing rather than right. Yeah, we did not we we had a long bug discussion about that, and that was when I was very young at the company, as if now I'm mature and know everything. <laughs> because after four months, I clearly get everything. Um, I'm silently judging you the whole time. Um, <laughs> while I'm sitting here quietly. But uh, no, the answer is I don't know how we're handling frozen arrays right now with respect to that. And I can understand why we're failing that test. Alex, is frozen array easy? And what yeah, is that a tricky web at all thing for you guys? Frozen array. So basically, the change here was that the supported entry types, rather than being generated from scratch as a new object every time, should always return the same. Oh, same array. It's the same, same object. Right. That's, that's a trivial change. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So you're yeah, just just confirming that there's no pushback on the fact that the spec requires that. And it will never change. So yeah. And, yeah. I, and I guess <laughs> if, if somebody puts something on it. Then it should stay there. Yeah. I think we're the same way. I just don't think we're having this agreement that the test should be passing. Yes. Yeah. It's just. And it's um, it doesn't basically already pass. So. <laughs> so, <laughs> we all say uh, Hold on. Can you <laughs> tell me that one again? Uh, that's uh, supported entry types. That's the test we're talking about. Yeah. I just want to see if it's got a. Come on. Uh, so it's like the little lifetime of the window opt-in or something like that. Mm. Probably, yeah. Um, the lifetime of whatever the JavaScript yeah. Yeah, lifetime is. That's I don't know yeah, the that's that's yeah, there's, there's, There are other things that do similar things. Yeah. So I'll just do what they do. Um, <laughs> so would it be possible for you to file issues on like a WebKit issue saying that you should support that and that would theoretically enable us to move forward or do we need to wait for the actual implementation of that? If, if we have agreement. <laughs> you catch me like. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so where we're at right now, Maybe? On, my understanding on HR time is where we are right now is we are waiting to hear back. Yes. When we sent it to REC, it was passing tests. Yeah, this is not yeah, HR time. This is performance timeline. Oh. Um, I want to set a performance timeline right now. So, 
There, there are no. It's not an issue. Is it a working draft or is it a CR? Uh, uh, no, it, it's a working draft because it was okay. demoted to working draft last feedback. And now we want to move it along. Uh, and it's no open issues. And we have and what, what review looks was? like a couple of. Is it privacy people? What? what? So, what review is a privacy interest group? Um, Let's look at our status. Did you? What's what's Ilya's work? I think we did it last time with the resource time. We did it all together. Yes. We, did we? I don't remember. Maybe it might be good to find that. So so. Yeah. We would have to we would have to double check that. Uh, uh, but I guess that was not your question. The question was related to the test results. Um, so we checkboxed in issue 62 uh, when we initially transitioned into CR in 2016. We checkboxed our privacy security review, but we I don't see a link to. I don't know that we had a ping review back then. There it is. So we. We did announce and send it through for wide review. 2016. Kind of feels like we should send it back through. Yeah, with a list of changes. And like, I don't think there are a lot of changes. It's just uh, get entry types and. Uh, Why well, was it demoted? Uh, it was demoted because it didn't have any like supported entry types, and we we concluded that we need to add a bunch of features in order to make this feature complete and enable developers to actually use Performance Observer. So one is the supported entry types, and the other is options for different like a Performance Observer, um, like not just have an array, but have different parameters for each entry type. So that long tasks can have different uh, parameters than resource time, for example. So we so need to issue, issue a core for our review. We noting those latest changes. Yes. So a call for a review basically just means uh, sending out an email to the list and the different you can take the different that. horizontal review groups will pick it up from there. Uh, on their on their own, yes. Okay. So we can definitely do that. So the AI is in the call. Can you put an action item on myself yeah. or on Charlie to do that? Yeah. yeah. Um, and otherwise, I think we have I think we should. agreement that uh, the test should be like. Are we enough? No, uh, actually, no. There's <laughs> one. There's one test, like the case sensitivity test, where it's not clear if uh, the test is problematic, and maybe we need to fix the test. Yeah, yeah uh, we're talking about that two or three years ago already. This case sensitivity. I apparently it's maybe. a very old test that no one bothered to fix. <laughs> so yeah, well, it seems like we fix the spec, or we never fix the test. That's what you're saying. Oops. Yeah. <clears throat> No, it, it seems like the test is potentially flaky on some infrastructure. Yeah, so there's a couple of test issues to sort. And but other than that, it's just the horizontal review and it should be ready to go to CR. Yeah, I yeah. yeah. So, and, so and there are a couple of yeah, those tests, uh, we don't need to block on the yeah. test. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, do you need the web platform test people to resolve the testing issues or no no no, no, no. it's just we, we, we yeah. need to do yeah, we need to do work. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I do have a question. Because I go to the performance time, it does have uh, offer in the options. Um, in the in, uh, which one? In the V two one? Yeah, yeah. So did we intend to include it? The, we we removed it. There was it was included by mistake. We removed it, Was but it maybe we didn't republish after <laughs> removing. <laughs> That's a working yeah, run. We can we can trigger a publication if you want. Yeah, maybe do that and see if if it gets updated. <laughs> <laughs> you want so we know what we're on. Yes, please. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, 26 June, and I think we updated, uh, like we removed the buffer slide from that branch afterwards. And lost her not. I think so. Um, yeah. Um, I, I do remember we worked this. Yeah. Uh, that's why I'm surprised that I still see the buffer. Okay, right. that's, that's a good catch. Okay. Um, Okay, so just make sure I have the eyes. Let's just so, see it's under call for you. Um, we need to fix the tests. Um, there are fix the, flaky, flaky like case sensitivity test, and I think uh, there's an AI on like regarding the frozen array. If you can, which have frozen again? Sorry. Uh, the performance timeline. Performance timeline. It's, it's the supported entry types. Test. And then okay, done. Done. Did you can you publish it from the level two grant? Apparently. So we know that we know that thing. Do a shift reload, you know. Uh, to avoid the cache. We still have the buffered flag here, so maybe there's. I did. I think. Yeah. It's still here. So yeah. Well, then in that case, when you need to draft on GitHub, you still have that flag. Um, so there's an there's an issue that says there's a oh, branch, okay. the level two branch. Yeah, but I thought I need to pick from the level two branch. Yes. Um, I see my commit to remove. <laughs> yeah. So yes. Yeah. So, so if you can re-republish. Yes, I can. Mark. I can. Earlier than yeah. That. So maybe I, I have to look at the commit. To see, there, there must have been a commit that re-added it. Um. Or you, or no, it's just was. It seems like it was published from the wrong branch. But it was so originally uh, uh, which removed, is the right in May. Or right right removed right. in May from the L two branch. And sometimes okay. and then it was re-edited and then removed. Yeah. Okay. Can someone provide me a link to the digital draft of level two? Yeah. So I don't actually. I don't. I think somebody needs to spend a little bit of time. To sort out where the commit is and make sure that. Um, I mean, okay, we're well, just getting, uh, Okay. So. I cannot undo what I just did. It's fine. That's fine. To work out. <laughs> <laughs> so, my question is who? Is that something you're going to work on, Nicholas? Is finding the. If I, I'm just looking at it right now because it's not. Okay. Um, I just put a. Uh, put a over the bug for us on that uh, for the cache and stuff. Um, so cool. I don't know if that helps. Remove the buffer flag from March 16. At least I'll bug open for it, but I, I don't <laughs> think this is a bug. No, I, at some point I thought it did. Somebody was like, how can you do this? And that's so, the, so the branch is just oh, I agree with you on part of the level two branch. So I can. Do you want me to send you the, that link or? No, that's fine. That's fine. I just need to find it online. Meaning it's not published on GitHub. I'm guessing it's this branch is not published on GitHub at IO. Um, yeah, Nicholas is the one who did all the. And, yeah, and, and the branch is fine. It's just we did publish from this branch. Right. Um, they can't find buffer in the in station. Yeah. Open, yeah. So it's, it's fine. probably just the wrong branch. Yeah. So we're okay. Okay, so another AI is to re republish the working <laughs> draft from the right branch. Five minutes and Someone should yeah. probably go cool. over this time to make sure it actually makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, shall we move on to resource timing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, so resource timing, there are a couple of open issues. Uh, none of them are ones that I consider worthy of actual discussion because they're just uh, 
work that we concluded that we need to do already. Uh, so one of them is just um, to align the tau definition with cores when it comes to uh, cross-origin redirects. And this is, I have a, an open PR for that that we'll potentially talk about later. Uh, and then be more explicit about uh, sub-resources and coming from style sheets. Um, that, yeah, we can talk about that issue uh, later as well. Um, but when it comes to tests, uh, we have a bunch of reds and yellows. Um, <laughs> uh, that is, that's weird. Yeah. That mm -hmm. So, okay. Uh, so when it comes to tests, we have uh, the test that is related to uh, entries from uh, no cores cross origin CSS patches, and that is one that um, Chrome and Firefox are both failing. This is something that we will need to implement. This is also something that will potentially be extended with one of the issues, because one of the issues is to have the definition also apply to descendants of those cross R's. So if I have a no core CSS that is importing a CSS that is importing more and <laughs> than an image, then all of those need to be excluded. And this is something that we'll need to A, define, because I couldn't find precise language to define that, but maybe we'll talk about it later. And the um, test that, you know, it goes beyond the first level. That basically, the exclusion goes beyond the first level, so those tests will eventually change. Um, what did I do? Um, and then we have a test that I added a couple of days ago related to um, status codes. Uh, that are not 200 and making sure that they create an entry. Uh, so this is apparently, so Chrome, the, the Chrome Canary passes that, and Alex lets, uh, yeah, you probably want to pass that as well. Um, but we can talk about that we'll do afterwards. Um, and otherwise, uh, when it comes to the failing tests on like, Firefox, do you have like? Uh, well, wasn't there a request earlier today to come up proper limits as well? Um, so the no, the buffer limits were already bumped up. Uh, at least in the recommended value, okay. but they can still become full. So all the buffer full logic is yeah is one of the things that were changed in the last uh, year. And yeah, and I think like it had significantly more failing tests on um, both like the Firefox and the Safari side, but it would still be great. Like basically if I, yeah, if we're looking for two passing implementations for each one of those single test cases, we have that, but uh, the fact that uh, neither Safari nor Firefox implements the um, buffering uh, mechanism. The Safari one is created. Uh, the Safari, it also has, oh, yeah. Safari is, yeah, Safari is green. Okay, sorry, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I we had a discussion about how it should actually work, so, it's a little complicated. No, but remember, it is. I don't know. Yes, it is. It is complicated, yeah. but we ended up uh, aligning 
uh, this stack and Chrome's implementation with uh, Safari's implementation. Yeah, um, yeah so that's why the tests are passing for both. But I'm just saying, for this mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it, it needs some, probably some work from Firefox. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, and then there are basically, I we don't necessarily need to review those tests individually right now, but it would be great to like maybe if you could dedicate uh, some time to triage all these issues and make sure that the tests make sense from your perspective and open. Relevant issues on that, that would be. I just opened a meta bug right now. Yeah. It just says green up resource timing for yeah. the tests. Yeah. So cool. thank you. And yeah, just recognition that the tests are yeah. testing the right thing yeah. would be great. Um, yeah, so I think that once we have. Once the current issues are resolved, and they will probably result in a few more tests added, um, that would, yeah, <coughs> that would be the blocking factor. Uh, again, for wide review, um, Philippe, uh, yes. do you think that, um, like similarly for resource timing, we probably want to take off the wide review? Okay. Uh, process. Uh, do we need to do that after all issues are closed? Um, so the philosophy in general is don't wait until your spec is final to request wide review. So so uh, um, do it. So yeah. Uh, Again, put an action item on me or share chain to do it, and, and we'll get it done. Okay. And. Yeah, I'm hopeful that we can at least close one of those, uh, like one of the outstanding issues uh, this afternoon. Um, so, uh, okay. So navigation timing. Research timing too just is as close as it's yeah. been since four and a half years ago when it started. Like, it's been a while, so, like, I just want to take a moment to say, well done. Good to see any of us going forward. Thank you. Yeah. OK. Um, so navigation timing, uh, there are a couple of issues that we probably need to discuss this afternoon. Um, a couple of. Um, you know, just work related items that are basically we need to add WDTs. Um, and then when it comes to the test status, we are almost there. This is surprising. Hmm. This is surprisingly good. No, but it's, yeah, I didn't know that there is a. There's like new and interesting test. Chromium is failing. Is that a new oh. test? Um, yeah, <clears throat> yeah, so, yeah we're really wow, not even here. Yeah, it's zero two up at the top. Yeah, yeah. So we're almost there, and yeah, for looks like one test that is on Chrome and a couple on Firefox, and we can be there testing one. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but they need to block it out. Um, oh, I would love Yeah, there's also. That's a from the issues that I would put in our comments. Uh, from at least one of the issues, we'll add another test. Um, uh, so, similarly, can you open, like, I don't know if you need a meta <laughs> bug for, but yeah. there are a couple of failing issues that would be great if you could write the dumb and right. the media. Yeah. Uh, and, why is Safari all red? Is that because of lack of support for uh, the for two? Yeah. Probably. For sizes? <laughs> no, that's L2 period. L1. Oh, you can't currently use uh, 
performance observer for navigation. Is it because it's like performance time? Get entries for navigation. Yeah. Because okay. it used to be dot performance dot time. That's right. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, so far exports L1. I don't think Safari exports L2. I think you're right. Could you? <laughs> Please. Um, <laughs> this is this is being pushed. Okay. and me. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, because it will enable some consistency. Which... Actually, I think it will enable any run library in existence that currently is choosing to use L1 data universally, which actually I've talked to people who are like, yeah, we don't want to do both. Yeah, right. It will allow them to begin the transition because IE eleven is has it. So basically, every not in the launch, every version of the world time that Safari yeah. yeah. is yeah. yeah. for some reason I've never seen the end of it. So let's do that. Uh, 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 too much use of yeah, but let's yeah. do um, yeah. maybe in thirty yeah. years. We we can. Um, um, I suspect we can say in the spec that it's deprecated, but it won't mean anything. Yes, but RUM libraries yeah, will uh, not, like, so things will be able to drop support. So theoretically, things can be done like uh, announcing deprecation, but true removal is different than announced deprecation. Yeah, and we don't do announced deprecations without clear deadlines. Well, uh, we as in wrong. Yeah. But, so yeah. that's a policy if the wrong vendors start moving to L2, hopefully the usage drops <laughs> and then if right. yeah, if the trajectory is right, we can then figure yeah. out. If all the run vendors move to the newer version and all the sites will update their libraries, yeah, then in five yeah. years. Hmm? I mean the incentives are there's new things that aren't exposed via L1. Yeah, right? so it's you get some sizes, you get HR time, accuracy, and a few other things when you switch. Yeah. OK. Um, so I think we're good on that. Uh, user timing. So um, we're, not, uh, we're not doing what you do for that. Um, not yet. It doesn't seem as if it's quite, it needs like another about a month. Like, it needs a few things to get resolved. It seems like the, 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 the issues. Do you think? I think the issues are not. Uh, I mean, so so it's. I think it's ready for one review. So the issues are basically uh, one is that it should hang off of the document <laughs> and not off of the browsing context, which is like spec mechanics as well as uh, you know an edge case where you have. An iframe that is telling its parent to reload itself. Uh, you know, one of the worst bugs. Uh, so it's definitely something we need to resolve, but I don't think it's something that will Im impact a privacy review. And yeah, all these issues are not ship blockers for a review. Yeah. Okay. So okay. I think we can kick off a wide review for that as well. Yeah, that sounds great for me. Any? Yeah. Sorry. sorry. Hmm. You repeat yourself. <laughs> uh, so, for navigation timing, uh -huh. we have uh, two new issues uh, from Boris. Let's discuss. Oh, oh man. yeah. Um, yes. So, uh, definition of. Uh, yeah, let's start with this one. Uh, spec for uh, performance timing uh, for navigation timing type doesn't doesn't match the implementations. And basically, in this test case, uh, where um, an iframe is telling its parent to kick off a function that reloads itself, uh, we are reporting. Uh, not what we thought we would be, or not what we said we would be, but didn't think it through. Uh, so we need to, basically Boris wants us to redefine uh, the type uh, based on the, like, hang it off of document, and then have document know what the resource, uh, what the navigation type is. 
So we probably need to move some definitions to HTML and then hang it off of there. It doesn't seem like something that would impact much real world usage. Does that seem like a uh, right. Yeah, correct. Yeah. David. Okay. So in that case, we can kick off like I, I need to resolve this, but we can kick off a wide review. Yeah. Like it, it, yeah, resolving yeah, yeah. this is not a blocker for yeah, me. you're not like changing review. fundamental stuff. Yeah. yeah. I agree with that because quite frankly, I couldn't even follow what he was talking about anyway. So, uh, so <laughs> I last read this at and I'm not sure AM, why so I'm like I'm... yeah, I'm not sure why he cc me on it or like that, I think I, I feel like I was resolving something else, and this came up as a result of it. And then he was like, "Oh yeah, so, so. yeah." So, so I thought I understood why his test should be uh, alerting zero and one, uh, or should be alerting one and one. And then, oh, I, this is I, that I, issue. I did at yeah. one point understand that. So it's already yeah. left my mind. I, I last looked at it at three a.m. So yeah. I, yeah, I'm. I, I need to. I'll work with you. That. I will work with you on it. Okay. Because cool. I did understand it at cool. one point, and um, okay. but these are cleaning up the specification issues, not uh, core specification yeah. must be re can't be reviewed yet. Yes, full system. Exactly. That's <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, so moving on to user timing, I think we have uh, like three. Four L three. Um, we have three issues, and to be honest, I haven't looked at user timing L three in the lens of we want to ship this because. What do you mean? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. No, you should, you should, moving the spec forward to um, CR. To CR. Um, so Chrome right. has already shipped the changes that are currently in the user timing L3 to retail. To, to retail. users. Uh, sorry, to the <laughs> to users. To people. <laughs> to uh, people, <laughs> not, not origin yes. travels. Yes. Yeah. yes. Um, and those tests are. Failing. Yes, those tests are failing because the feature is not yet implemented elsewhere. Uh, so, well, it's it's also a little tricky there to separate L three and L three shippers. What in, in what? I mean, I'm not sure all of those tests that are failing are L three. Oh, okay. Um, I, I I believe they are because L two ship. So okay. we passed the test. Like okay. everyone passed the test at some point. So I guess at this point well, we don't care about. I, I actually think yeah, was, we don't care about L two. Okay. Now the question is for L three. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I guess at this point we just wait for other implementations to take a look. I believe so. Okay. And I guess the core question is: Is there usage of the L three features on the web by websites yet? Do we have use counters for that? Point? Uh, maybe we should definitely get you the counter that we don't already have them. But yeah, it's too early. Well, and I'm asking simply because Alex, are you going to implement user timing in all three? I imagine so. Uh huh. And what would be the thing that would have you guys implement it? Um, a desire to uh, be compatible with the existing web. <laughs> <laughs> and if no users are using all three, then. Be a very low priority. Yeah. So, so, sorry, I'm just <laughs> spoon feeding me. <laughs> yeah. Um, so sure we do have use capture for. Do we have use capture? What? I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I'll make sure we. Uh, can we have that? Do we have we can add it? Yeah. Or we can like. Just look at the stats. Are the web apps even useful? Yeah, like, yeah, I feel like I'm just leaving the to for myself. No, no, okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah.
and then show usage. And, yeah. and we all suspect this because there were people using, like, using, like, kind of like, yeah, base sixty-four. Base for the name right. to, yeah. uh, but repeatedly. Like, so. I guess what I don't know is, can a user who was doing that now feature detect and then change their code, and would they do so if L three exists? Do we know? We we checked. Actually, this is possible. I remember. I don't remember yeah. what feature detect was, but I remember asking. Yeah, there are ways to feature detect. I but don't we, remember. Uh, it's okay. so it's not. It's not like. You check some property of the prototype of the user timing entry. Right, like the, oh, the detail so property. Yeah, there it is. And we didn't have any partners that like were ready and chomping up a bit to use the feature. Um, well, we I was pushed a lot to ship it, so I imagine we, we didn't. Well, we need to reach out and see if they're actually aware of it. Like the I think, framework folks were mm. wanted to use it. Yeah, uh, yeah I was excited too. I think about yeah. labeling <laughs> component specific. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so hopefully, if we have good uh, advertisement of it, it will get used. Because it, 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 it in increases the flexibility of the API quite a bit. Oh, yeah. So um, hopefully. Which, yeah. when do we ship it? Like, is it showing the same? 77? 77, I think. Oh, so like, yeah. like yeah. a couple weeks ago. I thought it was yeah. like uh, earlier. It would be two, but no. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's uh, pretty early. Okay, so it sounds like we need to do something. Did someone, yeah. did someone write up the. Look what we did. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember I, I told uh, Joe Medley about it. So hopefully. Yeah, so so we but I'm not sure. <laughs> so we need to add counters and then talk to people to make sure the counters go up, basically. <laughs> um okay. Um, otherwise, um, so the L two stuff. I know it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I don't want to give anyone any of this right. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. L two is it's not so. User timing. Uh, yeah, yeah. user timing. Oh, no, you're right. You're right. I need to. But the spreadsheet. I don't know. I don't know. Yes, I do. Oh, I like it. Yes, I do. Doesn't say when. Yeah. Um, yeah. Changed. You said this is correct, but the titles are not. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, By the way, just let the record reflect that the um, number of people in the room has significantly dwindled <laughs> when it comes to doing it versus pontificating. The volume of people in the room during pontification well, sessions was high. That's, that's also I, 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 do, I wouldn't the, call it there. I think that we get the talking about <laughs> Yeah. I, I don't I think that for that particular session, people need to be well versed in the history and where things are, and like similarly for the afternoon, I know, where just, for new proposals. I'm just joking. Yeah. But yeah. Sure. Just kidding, but serious. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so for page visibility, this afternoon I get to clean up some PRs. I think. Okay, that would be awesome. I think it's basically done, right? Um, there are a bunch of uh, PRs, issues. and yeah, so there are a bunch of PRs and issues that are, yeah, very low. Um, <laughs> we have five open PRs, and I think they've been yeah. sitting there because I've been not doing them. Yeah, the one issue that uh, will be more work and that came in more recently mm -hmm. is an issue for, for Marcos basically uh, saying that we rely on a bunch of HTML things that are not exported. Uh, the response from HTML is basically they shouldn't be exported. Uh, page visibility should uh, PR hooks into HTML and then use them. Yeah, you, you should. Yeah. You should add your hooks. I mean, Thou shall not monkey patch, basically. Um, so this one seems like a bit more work. At the same time, it doesn't seem like something that 
changes the functionality again this is a like a spec mechanics so it doesn't seem it doesn't it, it yeah it won't it's um, editorial wishes for the spec yeah um so it seems like similarly we can trigger a wide review for uh, page visibility well so page visibility is, is currently in proposed recommendation. Oh, so you're saying we already passed wide review. And this However, is However, because we are making edits, so the thing that we're changing on page visibility is weird. It's, it's the, the change we're making is the shift to add the ability to occlude. occlude. And I think what we decided is that was a minor editorial change as opposed to a something along those lines, is what I recall. It's been a while since I've actually looked. Let me, let me glance at the PR document. Yeah, PR2 is super simple. Like, a two is, is like, let's improve it, let's, they, and let's add on visibility change. This was, um, from you know October 2017, and actually was shipped <coughs> by most UAs like <coughs> multiple years before that. So that's what was in here. I think what we decided was that occlusion was not sufficient to go to L3, and that we were going to do an editorial update, kind of like the proposal today. And Philippe said, "Yeah, that's fine." <laughs> and so. Um, there is a core question, which is, hey, Philippe, is that still fine, or do we need to do something differently, like go to L3 and, you know, because it was also a may, not a must, occlusion. It's, okay. it's the, hey, if you wish, you wish, you may allow the change of page visibility to hidden when uh, UA is included. So, in terms of specific, uh, all browsers that previously worked still work. Yeah. Right. It adds new many. Yeah. So that was the reasoning. So I think we should follow up with Philippe and ensure we don't need a wide review on that. But okay. So the AI here is to check with Philippe yep. regarding wide review. And, and otherwise, then, yeah, test-wise, other than the pre-render test that I need to remove from there, uh, because now I'm implemented pre-render, and it's, I think, on, uh, like, at risk. Mark is at risk, mm -hmm. if not removed entirely. Um, otherwise, we have two passing implementations. So on the test front, we're good. <sighs> Um, Before I move to the next one, just I will come back to user time. Mean, for the use counters, who should I tag in the AI? <laughs> and then just looking at L3, the issues that we have open are about, like in the intro, just documenting how to use um, the new API. Yeah. So I guess. Oh, so we need a better. Yeah, explainer. So, well, we have, yeah, we have two issues open. I think one of them we can actually. Rose, which is right. yeah, maybe we can look at it after lunch um, <laughs> on, the, on the explainer because that's basically the only two issues. Okay. Hey, Alex, mm -hmm. one visibility change. So, we were actually just discussing earlier, uh, oh, and myself, about uh, the life cycle guidance that, um, for life cycle shifts. Mm -hmm. on the web and on visibility change is one of the APIs that we have been suggesting people use to do their lifecycle changes mm -hmm. and currently Safari seems to be feeling the unvisibility change it's tough. yeah is it just flaky it the uh, timeout here I, I it suggests that it doesn't run the event I wouldn't but I think it does and that's why I'm uh, it, yeah, it doesn't run it in that iframe. There Maybe are a couple of bugs around this with a change in Safari that may or may not be related, but like 
related to when you close tabs, it won't fire in some cases. I don't know what this test is testing. Um, so here it's an iframe that, um, yeah, it just checks that the iframe fires on visibility change after being removed. After being removed, it wouldn't surprise me if it didn't fire at once removed. Because we have uh, it, it had similar bugs, and what we found was that there were, sites were doing all kinds of hacky things to let's say handle the fact that Edge couldn't wasn't firing this. Mm -hmm. And so one of the conversations we had three years ago or whatever was to enable us to give the same guidance to web pages for how when to save content, when to, to really make the life cycle solid, the on visibility change should, that is super important. It has to, to, be to emphasize this a little bit, um, the only good cross-browser way to detect all the lifecycle changes is because of some of the Safari bugs um, and, and other browser bugs as well. When the page is being closed, you have to listen to both visibility change and um, before unload. And listening to before unload breaks VF cache in Firefox. It, it breaks VF cache. It doesn't break it in Safari, curiously. <laughs> um, <laughs> Should break VF cache. I think by Safari. Uh, right, right, by spec. But I think Safari uh, does it, has some heuristics that it uses to figure out whether a page, a page is VF cacheable. Okay. Even if it has the. Regardless know, of the. Yeah. yeah. But um, anyway, the point is that like it's very difficult to like, properly do all of this um, because very few developers are going to take the time to say, like, if I'm in Safari, then conditionally add this. Before a load handler, but don't do it if I'm in Firefox. And so I think the end result is it breaks BF cache in Firefox for most people. Um, are all the cases that you're talking about where like of different bugs related to tab closing and whatnot, is that testable in WPT? I don't know. Um, it, so it could be that the logic for uh, removing iframe. Is the same as like closing a tab because I think the way it works in I'm guessing the way it works in Safari is that it fires it on navigations but doesn't fire it from closing. So and so maybe, maybe but yeah time. maybe but uh, web driver it's pretty difficult to, to I mean you can open up a new tab and close it but like you have to do that hackily. Okay. I don't know if closing a window and closing a tab are the same. Because, yeah, they're not quite the same, but the same in what sense? I mean, in, in like for WPT, like, like it uses WebDriver, right? And so you have to, you're limited to the functionality of WebDriver. And yeah, it to, also, if you close the window, you like, you you need to still have the right. test the document right. running. Yeah. And, you know, so there, so there are four tests that are currently read for Safari. Uh, my gut says if those tests were made to pass, that it might cause this gap yeah. to get closed, and it might be that then for websites who are trying to write, uh, you know, hey, I've got a comment or I've written some text, they can write more consistent code to save that state. Yeah, um, and, and then if we research. see that those tests are not sufficient. So if those tests pass, but do you still see those problems, you know, with, with tabs or whatnot, it would be worthwhile to resurface that to make sure that we add some more tests. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say to your point, I think there might not be enough test coverage testing the closing the tab case because um, Chrome recently regressed, I think, in this area as well. Where they stop firing page visibility on tab closes. Regress and I'm fix. Not, was it regression? No, I mean I found a bug about this recently. I'm not okay. so sure it was actually a regression. Um, there was some weird thing where possibly it was working before, but only when DevTools was open, like that kind of weird stuff. But I think they're not test covering it because um, it, it should something should have failed if this was not firing on tab closes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I would assume that once that bug is fixed. It will add the WPTs unless oh. it's impossible to test, in which case we should file WPT bugs yeah. to make right. sure that it's possible. And then we already have a test of the iframe removal. So we have a test for iframe removal. So actually, I think that each of these tests that are read in Safari are 
some version of testing unload of a document, but I don't, I haven't looked at them to see exactly how. Yeah, it's, yes, all of them have unload and on visibility changes also testing unload. Um, yeah, so that seems like the correct. Oh, I think the, um, the real have a detail, but I think the Chrome issue was that when you have the onload handler, the behavior is different than if you don't have the onload handler. And so I think the WPT, like the test was adding all of the handlers and then seeing which one's fired. But the fact of adding the handler yeah. changed the behavior. So you need multiple tests. Right. Um, like that. <laughs> and that would um, typically not yeah. qualify as a WPT test because it's getting into the permutations. Right. right. There's no reason why those handlers are just testing that case. Yeah. Um, okay, so. All right, so, yeah, sorry, I, think I just can... wanted to, I just wanted to call it out and make you understand why I, why it is that it matters. It's, it's not just for going to the background, it's the specific use case of a website saving state, so that when in the back, so that then after it goes to the background, hopefully they're ready to code. Yeah. Or so, so... when they're shut down, when they go to the background, They've already said yeah, that. To avoid the before unload right. and on unload. And on also to get them off the unload. Yeah, yeah. as well. So. Um, that's a good point. OK. Um, Beacon, I think, uh, if I remember correctly, we're good on the spec side of things. Uh, we are failing miserably on WPTs. I didn't look here. Um, and by we, I mostly mean Chrome, uh, even though things are <laughs> better than they used to be. Mm -hmm. um, there are a bunch of open <laughs> issues that, uh, that we need to resolve. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that's a very, good <laughs> very precise thing. <laughs> Well, uh, and, and to be, I'll give you a little more detail. At one point, Chrome was passing Send Beacon, and, and then work was done, and it then became not passing Send Beacon, and it began to return false to sites that were previously getting true for similar payloads. And so, and it hasn't yet gotten back to green. There were there were issues with the uh, throttling. Sure. Uh, basically, once you since 64k, no. you were no longer able to use Beacon. That was <coughs> fixed, but as a result, a bunch of other things got rest. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, <clears throat> and otherwise, Safari's passing almost everything, uh, except type. for content type. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 And yeah, and Firefox also has a few array failures. buffers. Yeah. yeah, everything but array buffers. Um, yeah. Um, so I think what's the, what's the status on wide review here? Because I think we're like the spec wise, we're good. It's just that. It is in the CR already. It's in the CR already, so it passed. Uh, I believe so. Okay. I'm finished it. Okay. And the only reason we haven't taken it to spec has been it's the bugs. Bugs. We're just waiting on so, enough implementations to get. Yeah. So free. let's fix the bugs. I guess so that's the conclusion. Uh, AI. Everyone should fix bugs. I'm closest to perfect. You are. I'll prioritize fixing them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Just to have something to point to. See, look. I'm going to hold everything back. <laughs> um, okay. And request idle callback. Uh, we have one pesky issue that um, needs core input here. Which one? Oh, I right. broke the links. Um, right, if you refresh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, I see. Um, 
So there's one pesky L1 issues, which, uh, which is the deadline definition. We made significant progress on what we need to do there as, uh, on the face-to-face. -face. Uh, and someone, which is most probably me, uh, needs to actually do the work um, to define that. And once we'll have that, we should be built to power the rules. Uh, let's see what we have. So, this is why. Ooh, Power Fox, two implementations, green. Are you looking at requests? I don't call that. Yep. Yeah, I'm not loading for Oh man, Firefox, fully green. Sweet. And Safari is passed on a surprising order for tests. <laughs> Given. <laughs> I didn't look at the tests. I suspect yeah. they're. Yeah, they have a. Is this, <laughs> is this thing on a cert? <laughs> Um, two, three, yeah. four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve passing tests from across that assault. Yeah, yeah. I'm just really better to it. Oh, thank you. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. So basically, we need to resolve this pesky issue, and then we should be good to go. Should go back. Um. Actually, it's already. Yeah, it should be able to finish its route for Yeah. Um. So, and I believe the last one that we actually need, no, not potentially the last one, uh, preload. <coughs> yeah, we're running out of time. Um, preload, we have multiple thing tests that we all need to look at. Um, and otherwise, there are many issues, many blocking issues. The biggest one is, yeah, the level one tag here doesn't mean a whole lot. But um, which browsers have implemented preload? Has Safari implemented preload? Yes. That's right, you implemented it, right? Yes. <laughs> OK. So. All browsers have implemented, but we just haven't touched. No, no. Uh, Firefox has not shipped uh, because of this issue. Uh, we need to define the preload cache, which is a huge can of worms, but it seems like it's a can of worms we'll have to eventually eat. I don't know. Or, I don't know that metaphor. <laughs> uh, open. Sure. Open. <laughs> yeah. That's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> you might have to eat it too. Yeah. And I'm the what, what? Worms. Uh, anyway, um, this basically implies uh, defining the memory cache, which is a non interoperable thing that both Blink and WebKit have, and Firefox doesn't. Um, but yeah, we will need to look at what current implementations of that are doing, what they should be doing, why are they doing it, and then define it as something. Uh, and this is a fairly large project that is blocking the Firefox implementation, uh, as far as I know, as well as I, I don't think we should ship before this happens. Thank you. Yes. Um, okay. Um, and so, if I understand correctly, this is a combination of a number of test cases as well as the specification. Yes. Um, yes, and maybe we can avoid defining the full memory cache and be able to define a subset, but. Someone needs to sink in a few months of work, to be honest. Like, 
I'm very curious if anybody's seen any real interoperability problems on the web because of memory cache and implementation lack or implementation differences. I have seen cases where preload behaved differently between WebKit and Blink because of different memory cache behavior when it comes to char sets. Um, maybe that's like I think it's fixed, but um, yeah, there were related issues that and, and that what that observed observably caused them was that there was a difference in performance. Uh, preload it was resulting in preload double double downloading. So it's not just difference in so it, it is difference in performance, but it is an observable through resource timing difference uh, of we have multiple resource fetches versus one. Um, but yeah, it would be very hard for users to actually know that those differences exist unless some run library is relying on one, you know, some. So I guess the consequences that have been seen have been more resource using and timing stuff than I got the wrong resource because it came from the cache and yeah. it should have been refreshed. Yeah, yeah. It's typically what I've seen is double downloads. Okay. Um, so this would be a nice one. I mean, it's a huge amount of work. But, uh, I'm trying to pull up the cross tabs, but if I remember correctly, it's like 32% of page that we see. A lot, yeah. So, um, <clears throat> I, and talking to the relevant uh, Mozilla folks, I've been basically it would be hard for me personally to prioritize that work before I know that this is the blocker. The preload stuff. The preload cache uh, for the Firefox implementation. Um, so I've been talking to uh, Dragana and folks about, you know, timelines and, you know, so that when it becomes a blocker, I can make sure that it blocks for as little time as possible or something along those lines. Um, Okay, and then otherwise we have resource hints, which we concluded last year that they need to be split up into four different specs because each one of them have implementation tests and like very different implementation test statuses. Uh, but we haven't actually done any of that work to actually do that. So we should, but it's uh, yeah, it can remain working draft. Long tasks, pain timing, I believe they are currently, yeah, they're all working drafts. Uh, server timing is one where we could uh, make some progress. There are a bunch of open issues. Um, that I talked to Charlie Bazak, and he's still uh, interested in making progress on them uh, and interested in remaining the active editor. Uh, Test-wise, there are some, like one of the issues is touching on parsing of malformed headers. So this needs to be resolved. Uh, but once it would be like tests would be passing in multiple implementations. So it's mostly Question of closing up the issue. Uh, so he implemented server timing in all open source browsers? Uh, in WebKit and Blink. Okay. And Firefox? Firefox, Firefox, Firefox implemented. <coughs> okay. Yeah. Um, and then we have the question of wide review for server timing. Uh, so when it comes to. I don't think we should block on the parsing shenanigans. Um, I heard rumors about privacy concerns uh, from the Safari side, because I think WebKit is 
Like, I see that it's passing, but is that behind a flag or or is that uh, part of SDP? Or I am not sure. Okay. Um, and Alex, are you aware of any privacy concerns related to server timing or? That sounds vaguely familiar, but it's been a very long time. Um, I don't think I could recall it. Okay, so if you could dig up but I, anything. I think, I don't think that they were truly substantial. It, I think they're kind of hypothetical. I haven't thought of all the things that a server could do yet, but at the end of the day, a server is sending this information and they can send whatever information they want. And, um, there may have been some kind of concern about cross-origin data. Um, but this is like this is behind how. So yeah. server timing is not surfaced if that was not. Yeah, I think that the privacy concerns were before town. Okay, proposed. maybe, maybe. Okay, I, 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 yeah. details are very fun. okay. If, if you can, like, if there is nothing, that's great. If there is something, um, it would be great if you can kind of update us on those concerns. Yeah, cool. Thank you. And so, yeah, so we could take off a review. And I think for everything else, it's just working graphs for the moment. Um, one more thing. Uh, resource signing L1. Hmm? That's a thing. Okay. Uh, it's been sitting there. Oh, it's still CR. It's still CR. Why is it still CR? I missed that. <laughs> I guess we can catch Philippe and just check in because we should be able to just move that. Um, I think so. Yeah, let me just double check that there are no level one issues. Are. There aren't any questions. Okay. Um, so then I'll we'll just make a note. Yeah, that's a good catch. <laughs> okay, and with that, I think we can break for lunch. And then the agenda this afternoon is uh, go over the hard discussion issues and Resolve and PR and go, go, go. Yes. Okay. So um, we'll reconvene at 2 o'clock. That's good. Uh, oh, uh, there was, you said uh, Stefan wants to talk about, uh, not Stefan, uh, Ian. Uh, Ian wants to talk about uh, you also reporting issues. Yeah. Oh, reporting right. issues. Okay, cool. Yeah. Any comment that I need to go watch for? So he'll be here about four to start. Talking through and working on the okay, cool. we will do everything else before. We'll, we'll finish everything by four. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll <laughs> no, but it's like to be honest, there aren't a ton of issues to discuss, so we can probably do that. Okay, cool. So let's go eat. Let's do it. <laughs>